All right, we are back with Andy. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. And uh, so, uh, Andy, we, lo- we lost you right at the sun was going. The sun was down. It was dark out. Jake ran eight laps, all within a tenth. Uh, I'll let you, I'll let you take over from there. <laughs> Uh, just a closing statement was like I, I said, you know, I've been around the sport almost 40 years and I'm not, you know, easily imp- impressed anymore. Not, you know, a lot of things don't surprise me. But when I looked at his at his lap times in, like I said, damn near darkness, um, you know, the last eight laps of the race at within, you know, a, a 41 and a 49. So within, you know, a tenth. Uh, and I, and I overhear him pushing up the scales and his dad said, man, could you, could you see? And he, Jake said, no, I really couldn't see much of anything. And he says, well, how did you know where to hit the brakes and when to turn in? And he says, well, we've been here for a few days. I just remembered where all the bumps were on the track and I used the bumps to guide me. <laughs> and I went, holy cow. And that's, and that's when you realize how good these kids really, really are. Um, whether it be Jake or Hunter or Liberante or Cole Shade or, or that, or the, you know, whole field, right? I mean, there's 27 kids all, all gunning, and I call them kids, and they probably don't like to be called that, but I'm, I'll be 50 this are. year, so. Yeah. Yeah, they're kids. Um, you know, but kids you that know, I've known darn near really their whole life. new blood coming in. It's, uh, I mean, a lot of those names, a lot of these names that people are going to hear, they're not going to be familiar with, but they will be very shortly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, the, the next one coming, man, is, uh, is Cole Shade. Uh, Cole Shade, William Ferguson. I mean, these are these are kids that, I mean, they're 15, 16 years old. So this is Ferguson's first year in a shifter cart. Put it on the podium one day in Tucson. Um, Shade put it on the pole, um, you know, on Saturday in, in, in the shifter class. I mean, the, you know, they race against, I mean, I mean, the first time I ever met Jake French, it was 2007 at the Rotex Nationals in uh, in Centennial, uh, Colorado. I mean, that was 12 and a half years ago, right? Yeah. And you're talking about kids, and you're talking about kids that are 15 and 16 racing against him, and uh, and and you know, giving him the business. So, it it like you said, it will be fun to watch. Certainly fun to watch as as these kids mature. We've we've watched them all. I mean, heck, I look at Gary. I've known you know Gary since he was twelve years old, Carlton. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's just exciting. It's exciting and fun. So I mean, you definitely would say uh, Cal Speed was very successful. It sounds like. Oh yeah, I mean a, a record number and <laughs> to survive to survive uh, what, what we went through, you know, unfortunately we had, we did have those three ambulance runs, you know, grateful that, that all three of the kids are, uh, are well and healthy and, you know, bumps and bruises and, and some stitching up, but nothing, nothing life threatening or critical by any means. I mean, no, probably all of them will be back in a cart, you know, by Sonoma, if not sooner practicing. Uh, we saw, you know, a couple of the kids back at the racetrack. You know, the Saturday kids were back at the racetrack. Jones had to get back in the cart on Sunday. Yeah. So, well, and that's you know, good that's, news that's too. That there weren't sign. serious injuries. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Especially with the kids, I, it's <laughs> I, it just I, I, you know my heart always goes out when I hear you know the young kids when they're hurt. Uh, but you know, one of the things I really took away and from again being the outsider trying to figure everything out on my phone or on the computer there. From what I saw, I didn't see anything bad say said about your series and how Saturday ended up. Um, I didn't hear any rumblings, anything bad about cutting the lap short and, um, you know, trying to put the mains on Sunday and just kind of ruining everybody's time. And I think that's a great Testament to, the positive attitude of the people that attend these events and that are supporting you. Cause sometimes probably worse at the club level than at other events, but sometimes you just get all the drama and um, yeah, Cal speed. I, I called my boss and I called a couple other people say, Hey, what's going on? Why? Where's the results? <laughs> so right. kudos to you guys and your crew uh, for, I mean, the attitude starts at the top, right? It, and it, you're setting a good attitude, and it's just really showing. So, uh, kudos. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I have said, you know, that the, the personality of, uh, of any, every series or organization certainly uh, mirrors in some respects, the personality of its, of, of, of its owner or the person at the top. Um, I am a no drama individual. I can't stand drama. Um, plenty, plenty enough drama happens at the racetrack with, but without me or my staff uh, helping create it. So if I can avoid that at all costs, I will. Um, you know, and, and yeah, there, there's, like you said, you didn't see many grumblings. I mean, I, I got a couple texts from a couple dads and that's okay. Um, people have my phone number and I don't take it personal. They're, they are the customer. They're the ones spending the money. They're the ones supporting the program. So they have a right to express their opinion. Uh, I have no, I have no problem with that. And like I said, I do not take it personal. Um, you know, I, I've told people from day one, you know, there's 500 people on the, on the, on the grounds there and not one of them showed up today said that I'm going to do a crappy job. I mean, does it happen for sure? Does a driver miss his mark? Sure. Does a mechanic make a bad call? Does an official make a bad call? Do I make mistakes for sure? But nobody shows up trying to do a bad job. Yeah. And uh, as long as people realize that, as, as long as they realize that, I, I think we're all fine. And I think, I think that, and I appreciate the compliment saying that it starts at the top, but, it's a community effort. Um, you know, whether, whether it's, uh, whether it's the attitude and the environment that I and my staff have helped create, I I'll take credit for that with them for sure. Um, but it's the people on the ground that, uh, that don't feed into any unnecessary drama and, uh, and help the day go. Yeah. And, and it makes a huge difference. I, I, I do hear because of my day job, I hear a lot of feedback from everywhere and uh, yeah a lot of people were really they were really excited after um the, the rock cup the rock the rio event and i know that's not your event but you are tied in with rock cup and a lot of people after that event just couldn't wait for your series to start and that was really neat to see it's like all right people are actually ready to get back in the cart and go drive yeah no i'd say it's for sure and and you know the rock the real event it we feed each other i mean um you know the rock the rio would not have had you know 200 entries its first year without the challenge having almost 100 and the rock the rio wouldn't have had you know 300 this past year without the challenge um you know breaking 100 but on the flip side i don't think i'd have hit 140 at Cal speed without the rock, the Rio hitting 300 three months ago. So, you know, it all feeds itself and you know, the, the rock, the Rio is relying on challenge and challenge is relying on rock, the Rio. And as long as we, you know, keep the same focus and keep the same positive attitude and move forward, it's going to keep growing. I mean, I, there is no doubt in my mind that within two to three years, challenge could hit 200 and the Rio could hit five. And if it does, I mean, watch out. It's, it, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Um, I won't say it's unbelievable because it's believable because I know the work we've all put in, but unbelievable to say that, holy cow, we, that, that can happen in such a short period of time. Yeah. Well, and then that, your, your comment is going to tie in perfectly to my next uh, question, I guess. Um, so your next event is, is Sonoma. Yeah. And um, not for the, not for this, next race but you're going to have a couple of events uh with your california rock championship where you're doing a collaboration with the sonoma uh group and steve cameron and those guys and i think you hit the nail on the head with your series wouldn't have been as strong without rock cup vegas being strong and vice versa rock cup vegas wouldn't be as strong if your series wasn't as strong so it goes back and forth and then now here you are, you're, you're coming up to NorCal, uh, and you've been to Sonoma many times. And you guys have a couple of races down the road that you're uh, going to do some collaboration with. That, that's only good for the racer. It helps the racer. Oh. It's great. It's, uh, it's absolutely great. I mean, uh, you know, Steve Cameron and his, and his crew up there, you know, we have a great relationship, and he's been very supportive, obviously, when – when I pulled the trigger and, and moved to rock, um, you know, with the challenge, uh, you know, he did much the same, you know, the very next year, or really nine months later, eight months later, 
um, for the 2018 season. So we kind of started, you know, together. Um, and, and for sure it's, it's these type of collaborations and partnerships that that's going to help it grow. I mean, I, I don't believe in, you know, totally controlling everything. It's not my style. I think we all, we all need to help each other and, and having good partners, um, certainly, certainly helps build the program together and, and, and having the same, same focus and mindset, uh, helps, um, you know, so last year we did the CRC, the California Rock Championship. I put, I, I originally had a four race schedule and one, unfortunately, we had to cancel. Um, the first two were, were pretty tough. You know, I was hoping to start in the 50 and 60 range and we had about 30. So those, those for sure were <laughs> not great for the wallet. Those were, those were money losers, but we, we introduced the program to maybe a, a more local customer. Um, and then we, uh, we ended the year in, uh, uh, Labor Day uh, with a collaboration with the FKC group where we had uh, like 80 carts at Cal Speed, which was great. Um, so this year I decided to switch it up and do two kind of bought two that I would promote and then collaborate with Steve Cameron with two up at Sonoma. And basically the two Sonoma rounds are just going to be points paying races for people that identify themselves as a CRC participant. Um, they will be run by Son- Rock Sonoma. They will be, you know, administered by Rock Sonoma entries by rock sonoma etc um, all i will do is go up there i mean we do as the tire distributor supply the tires for them um obviously now with the with the tire and engine program or excuse me with the engine and parts program that we have i'll roll up there with the parts trailer to support folks if they need some help and the dealers up there and the end users uh, as well so you know and at the end of the day at those two events i'll just get grab a spreadsheet of, of those folks that identify as crc and, and plug them in a point spreadsheet so um, really that program starts uh mid mid may um may 16 17 i believe is the exact weekend at button willow and then uh and then we go july i'm actually bumping one of the dates i'm gonna I'll put this out actually in a, in a real press release here quickly but um we just decided this this past week we're gonna go use the july rock sonoma date as a crc date and then I'm I'm doing Santa Maria in August, and then um, and then a Rock Sonoma date uh, uh, September 12, 13, I believe, which is the weekend right before the Rock Fest at Sonoma. So it's uh it's gonna be exciting. Um, it'd be nice to see some Sonoma participants come down to the two that are in Santa Maria and Button Willow, and it'd be great, you know, to have a bunch of SoCal people make the trek up to those two plus the two at Sonoma, and I think that collaboration will be great. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll start building things, uh, again and get, get it moving in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would never, there's two jobs I've always told myself I would never do in karting. I would never be a race promoter and I would never do tech. <laughs> Those are the two <laughs> jobs. I, I, I don't, I don't envy your position. I don't envy tech director's positions. Uh, I, I, I would be. If I could find someone to pay me just to sit at my computer and read down a list of race events, that would be pretty cool. I, I don't mind being a promoter of promoters, but um, right. yeah, I mean, a promoter. I, I'm looking at the NorCal Carter's calendar right now, and if we look at March, there just for events that are related to NorCal karting, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... 16, 17, 18, 19 events just in March for karting yeah. that relates to NorCal karting. I mean, it's, um, it, it has to get pre, it has to get pretty cloudy and pretty noisy as a race promoter to try to stand out amongst all that competition, distractions, and whatever you want to call it. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, you know, I mean, there's a, obviously there's levels i mean you know i mean and and trust me when i say levels levels as we all know is is competitive levels or cost level or or driving experience level but but in the end everybody finds where they can compete whether it's from a financial or from an experience or from just an energy standpoint right and there's always going to be a need for the clubs at the grassroots level to get people in the sport. I mean, that's, that's really what NorCal does a far better job than SoCal at this point is you have a much stronger club base up there. And, uh, and, and it, and it's a tech-